So now that we've looked at a lot of different scenarios and possibilities around retrieving data, a data feed from an external source, I want to talk about a problem that happens when you are trying to update, your, update a data feed while a program that's animating is running. So for example, if we have, we have a, a simple processing sketch with like setup and draw. And maybe here is where we have our call to load XML and some URL goes here. We load all sorts of data, we calculate it, we get everything, we do all we want, oh, and then we do all this work here, and we get this beautiful you know, design, spiral, pattern, colorful things on the screen. What if, in th what if this data that we use to draw this, it changes every five minutes, or every five seconds, or every half a second? What if every so often I want to ask in draw for new data? Well, this is, this is an asynchronous call meaning uh, it takes time. When I say load XML, I've got to request this URL, pull the data back, and once I've got, and that takes time. <laughs> the server's got to like hear my request, response, and, and it might not take very long. It might be like half a second. For us, that's no problem, but for an animation program that's trying to run 30 frames per second, this can be a huge problem. And what you'll see is that your program will stutter. So let's take a look at kind of a fake scenario here, whoops. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I've got a program here where I have, okay, so I have a fake function called load data, which does nothing. And if I were to take that load data function and put it in setup, we've got no problem, my program runs. Even if I create, now, I'm, you should, this function delay exists in processing, and basically you should never, ever, ever use it. The only valid use I've ever found for using delay is exactly this, demonstrating something that takes longer. So let's say there was something in here that takes uh, a thousand milliseconds or one second to execute. It's no problem. If that happens in setup, a second goes by before the program starts. Now, however, if I were to now put that load data function into draw and run this, my program is like crawling to a halt because every time before it draws, it's got to request data, wait till it comes back, and then draw the next frame. This is no good. And what we want is instead for the call to load data to go off and do its own thing however long it takes while draw continues to execute. And this is what's known, the solution for this is called threading. A thread being a sequence of instructions that's happening one at a time while a program is running. That's like the worst definition of thread ever. Thread, it's like a, it's a string and we've got one string and we're just going along it. If I could have two strings, one going and retrieving the data, the other animating, if this one's taking a long time, this one will still go fast. So, and this, by the way, the processing, a processing program is a single thread. It's often referred to as the animation thread. Set up, then draw over and over again. Every line of code, one at a time. So what we want is for load data to happen off in another thread. So now, if I jump over here for a second, again, I'm gonna kind of show you a program that's rather complex that we could kind of mostly ignore. But I wanna show you this because here I made these two like thread objects and I'm giving them some values like 1,000 and cat and 1,500 dog. And when I run this program, what you're actually gonna see is that cat is count and dog are both counting up, but um, they are, uh, cat is counting every 1,000 milliseconds, dog is counting every 1,500 milliseconds. So these are actually separate threads that are happening in the background and I'm just drawing their status onto the screen. This is, uh, I probably should have shown this to you first. This is kind of how you do threads in Java. And you can see there's a class here and it does extends thread and there's all these variables like how long to wait and whether it's running or not. This is something you might look into at some point if you need a more sophisticated thread that's keeping track of a lot of information. However, if we go back to this problem of simply wanting to execute a function to, and have it have draw keep going while that happens in a separate thread, there's actually quite a easy way to do this. And if you've ever done any programming in JavaScript, this almost kind of mirrors how JavaScript works. JavaScript is, has a really easy time with these types of multiple events and asynchronous things all happening. So um, let me come back here and let's go back to our program where we were loading data. Now, one thing I want to change about this is I want to say like, 
Uh, I'm going to use the modulus operation. I don't know if in any of these videos I've covered the modulus operation, but just very briefly, modulus is the percent sign. It gives you the remainder of division. So 60 divided by 60, equal, or 120 divided by 60 is 2 remainder 0. 121 divided by 60 is 2 remainder 1. Modulus is 0 or 1, that remainder. So uh, the frame count modulus 60 will only equal 0 at 0, 60, 120, 180, 240, etc. So every 60 frames, I want this to happen. Now what you'll see is every 60 frames, there's a one second pause while it loads the data and then keeps going. So instead of calling load data directly, I'm going to use processing's thread function and pass into the thread function the name of the function I want to execute as a separate thread. So this code down here is going to execute. However, it's not going to stop here. It's going to keep going. Processing is going to keep going. People are in the hallway talking very loudly. I don't know if you could hear them. So you can see now I'm getting my got data, but this animation is never stopping. So this is a case, uh, uh, you know, uh, again, you, this is not what you'll be doing. Uh, presumably, you're going to have like kind of a massive amount of stuff. In, uh, not a, a, sorry, you're making a request for some data source, something that actually takes a small amount of time. The reason why I said massive amount of stuff is uh, um, I was kind of thinking of another example, which I'm just going to uh, pull up really quickly. Uh, it's inside of processing under threads. And I'm going to run this one. And you can see what happened so fast. Let's, uh, let me, um, <laughs> uh, let me put a, like a delay in here. <laughs> Just sometimes, so this is a scenario where I have this like loading bar going and then it's, it's finished loading, <laughs> click the mouse to load again. So this is also a, a nice use for a thread. If you have something that's going to take a really long time at the beginning of your program and you don't want it to just be this blank screen while the user's waiting, you could potentially have that go off in a separate thread and draw is continuing so it knows if it's not finished, draw this loading bar. If it is finished, draw this other stuff. And you can see here, the, what a nice sort of trick here, and I'm going to come back to here to explain this, is if, uh, this is pen is no good, if this is my uh, load data function, and if I have a global variable, sorry, maybe called finished, which I'm going to say is equal to false, if this takes a long time to execute, and at the very, very end, I say finished equals true, then inside of draw, I can be doing stuff, draw is looping while it's inside this code here, and I can say, if you're not finished, draw this loading bar, and as soon as it gets to the end, the thread will be done, and it, then draw can draw something else. So this is also a common technique that you might take a look at. So if you're looking for a kind of uh, example um, that kind of brings all this together, I might take a look at example 18.9 in the learning processing uh, GitHub set of examples. There's this, one thing that's very hard to do is find a data source that changes very often. Like the weather feeds, you know, the temperature is not changing on a like second to second basis. Um, but this is actually, if you're just looking to practice, this is a pretty good one. It's time.jsontest.com. And this is a JSON feed that all it does is give you the actual current time. And you can see milliseconds since the epoch. And you can see the actual time here. So this is a data feed that's changing very, 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 very rapidly. Um, and so this particular processing sketch is requesting the time every so often. And, one, and, and you can see that this request is being done in a separate thread. So what you, what you can kind of see here, this is a little bit goofy, but this little animation right above my head, it's animating whenever it's waiting to load the time. So this is also something you could think about if you have a program that's looking for a piece of data. Um, you might show an animation while like, you know, updating, and then it's done, and it has the new data. It's kind of indicate to the user what's going on. But you need to be drawing, so that request has to be in a separate thread. Um, Anyway, there's so much more kind of scenarios and possibilities and different kind of configurations of how this might work. Uh, actually, one that I just thought of that might be worth mentioning is what if you want to uh, load an image? And loading an image can take quite a bit of time. It's a large file. You might need a thread for that. Actually, processing has a little known function um, that will take care of this for you. 
um, even you could use the thread function, um, but one thing I just should uh, mention is that you can also use this request image function. So request image function will launch the loading of the image in a separate thread. So if you have a very large image, it'll allow processing to continue. And what you can actually do is you know the image is ready as soon as the width is not uh, zero. So if the width is zero, it hasn't loaded yet. If it's negative one, it means actually it failed to load, there was a problem, otherwise draw the image. So that's something you might uh, take a look at it for something that you're doing. So anyway, thus uh, ends this sort of section of videos on data, threads being a last little piece there. And what I might suggest is if you did something where, you're, where you loaded data, try putting that loading data into draw and see if you can make it happen in a different thread. And that's it. And I need to find the button that I pressed to stop.